take a trip out into uh, Eastern Montana. And um, we're out here on the prairie. So I'll put some grass. All right, maybe a cottonwood tree. Okay, so here's the surface of the earth. And if we were to go down, we'd end up in Eastern Montana, we'd end up with a series of stratigraphic layers. So we might have some colluvium, sandy soil in the upper few meters. And then we'd get into layers of shale Uh, maybe we got a sandstone here. We end up with a limestone. And then we might have another shale. So the Earth's surface or the Earth's interior is, you know, layered because of different geologic processes, right? So this is a pretty classic. If we're out in Eastern Montana, we're looking at big horizontally lying sedimentary layers that were deposited as the interior sea transgressed into the continent and then regressed, right? So we have these big, thick horizontal uh, laying layers. Now, if we were to come here and sort of take a <laughs> core of the shale, all right, and, um, and go measure the hydraulic conductivity, or we were to come down here, so let's, let's say this is we measure, we take this shale, we measure the hydraulic conductivity in the lab and we get, we get some hydraulic conductivity K shale, right? And then we come down here and we measure it in the sandstone, all right? And we get K sandstone. And we could come down here and measure it in the limestone we get K limestone. And then we come down here, we measure it in this shale and we get K shale too. All right. So <clears throat> when we when we think about groundwater flow through this whole sequence, all right, through this stratigraphic sequence, so this is my sequence, all right, then my shale does not equal my sandstone does not equal my limestone. The hydraulic conductivities of these different materials aren't equal to each other in general, right? Why? What controls hydraulic conductivity? Oh. 
Okay, poor throat radius is what controls it, but that's related to grain size, right? So which of these materials has the smallest grain size? Yeah, it kind of depends on what we call a grain of limestone. Cause that kind of doesn't make sense, but, um, but yeah, shale agreed. Small, smallest uh, sediment size. Limestone kind of doesn't even have a grain size. It's a crystalline material, right? So at any rate, the pore throats, the connected pore networks are not the same in all these materials, right? We so we shouldn't expect the hydraulic conductivity. So the point here is if I come and measure the hydraulic conductivity at a bunch of different points beneath my feet here, it's not the same. All right. So this we call heterogeneous. This means if I go at a bunch of different points, if hydraulic conductivity varies, or permeability, or any property actually. But here we're gonna, we're gonna, when I, when I refer to heterogeneous or isotropic, I'm almost always referring to the hydraulic conductivity in, in this class. If it varies from one location to another, That is heterogeneous. All right, and the important point here is that I've, I've taken the core here and then I've moved some distance and I've taken another core. I measure those two hydraulic conductivities. If they're not the same, then I am heterogeneous over that distance. Now, there's a really important point here. And there's an implicit scale when we think about when we think about whether we describe something as heterogeneous or not. So first of all, let's let's say so. What's the opposite of heterogeneous? Okay. And so, what do you think homogeneous means? From one location to another, hydraulic conductivity does not change from one location to another. All right. Does not vary from one location to another. This is homogeneous. All right. So an important point here is that these descriptors are scale dependent. And why do I say that? Well, the earth, if I was to measure, like the earth's materials are always different. So at some scale, the earth will always be heterogeneous. All right, for sure. You can't, the earth is a heterogeneous place. But so at the formation scale here, we would definitely expect, I mean, sorry, at the sequence scale. So this is my sequence scale. At my sequence scale, I would certainly expect this thing to be heterogeneous, all right? But if I came into this 
sandstone, all right? And I sort of, if I took a bunch of cores in this sandstone, I might find that my hydraulic conductivity is relatively the same. So this guy, KSS, this one KSS2, and this one KSS3, I might find that these are all pretty much the same, all right? So we might say that it's, that this sandstone is homogeneous. So at the scale of this formation, we might say that it's homogeneous, right? And there's some geologic clues to lend us to think why that might be the case. This was a huge transgressive sequence. It was a beach that was laid at the shoreline as this ocean moved all the way in. It deposited a pretty uniform, well-sorted sand, and it's thick and it's continuous. It was the same depositional environment you know, the sand looks the same. It's probably pretty similar in hydraulic conductivity, all right? So this is a homogeneous at the formation scale. So, so two important points. First of all, homogeneous means it doesn't vary from location to location. Heterogeneous means it varies from location to location. But anytime we have that descriptor, there is a scale associated with it. And that's really important. Hydro hydrology in general, all, all of the physical sciences, but hydrogeology in particular, all of our descriptors are incredibly scale dependent. It can be homogeneous at a certain scale and heterogeneous at another scale for sure. We would expect that, all right? So, you know, whenever, whenever you use the word homogeneous or heterogeneous, or whenever you read it, you got to think about what scale are, are we referring to here? Okay, so heterogene, heterogeneity and homogeneity. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to zoom in and let's, let's focus in on this core of of K shale. So let's zoom in. On core of, of shale. And when we look at this core, if we were to get our microscope out and and sort of look at the grain network here. What do shale grains look like? Or sorry, clay, what do clay minerals look like? What shape are they? Yeah, they're flat plates. So if we were to, if we were to look in here, we'd probably see something where we had these flat plates stacked together. And these plates would tend to be um, oriented in the direction of bedding, right? That's how you get bedding in shale. It's how these mineral grains get aligned as the rock forms, they get preferentially aligned in the direction of bedding. So we got these grains. Aligned. With bedding plane.
Okay, so when fluid flows through a shale, let's consider, um, let's also, let's give ourselves a coordinate axis here. So this is our axes. This is the X direction and this is the Y direction. If I'm thinking about water moving through my sediment in the X direction or my shale, we can kind of track the flow pass through the shale. And because of the stacking, there's some pretty straight flow paths through my shale, right? Now let's flip the situation and say, hey, I'm interested in flow in the Y direction. So now if I'm, if I'm looking at flow in the Y direction, QY, it's got to take this tortuous path weaving around all the plates. <clears throat> So this sort of alignment of the grains, we could intuitively think or surmise that the resistance to flow is different for our shale depending upon the direction of flow, right? So we might have, which, so let's say here, that I think about the hydraulic conductivity in the X direction. So K sub X, hydraulic conductivity in the, for flow in the X direction, right? And that's a long bedding, so a long bedding. Here, do you think this is higher or lower than hydraulic conductivity in the Y direction? Yeah, we might expect in a shale, we might expect KX to be greater. In fact, maybe even much greater than KY. All right. But the main point here is that KX is not equal to KY. Because of the way that this earth material is set up, if, if the flow, if the head gradient happens to be driving the water along bedding, I'll have a higher, hydro, uh, a high, higher hydraulic conductivity. If the head gradient is wanting to drive the water up through the bedding, all right, across perpendicular to the bedding, I'll have a lower hydraulic conductivity. All right, so this, oh no. This directional dependence of permeability or hydraulic conductivity is what we refer to when we talk about isotropy. So this, so if hydraulic conductivity is directionally dependent
then we get, um, we call that anisotropic. All right, so what anisotropic means is that the fluid flow or it, the hydraulic conductivity depends upon the direction of fluid flow. So let me ask you this, if I come to the shale and I took a whole bunch of cores in this shale and so I got K shale one, uh, K shale A, K shale B. And I tell you that this shale was deposited in this huge interior seaway. It was just shales filtering out of this water being deposited at the bottom of this ocean. What do you think the relationship between these two are? The, is K shale A and K shale B, do you think those are gonna be the same or are they gonna vary? Yeah, I would think, so is this homogenous or, or not, or heterogeneous? Yeah, I think you'd have a good, you know, argument to say, hey, given this depositional environment, I expect all these hydraulic conductivities to be relatively even, that I'm homogenous at the formation scale of this shale. All right. But if I come down here, I just told you that if I zoom in on the shale, I definitely don't expect the hydraulic conductivity to be the same in both directions, right? I would expect that fluid flow in this direction would be greater or the hydraulic conductivity would be greater in the X direction than in the Y, right? So the point here is that I can be anisotropic and I can be homogenous, all right? As long as my anisotropy is the same from location to location, then I am homogenous. So a critical thing about directionally dependent at a point. So anisotropy refers to the hydraulic conductivity at a single point. Is it different in one direction or another? All right. So this is, this is at one point, at a point. Okay, let's, let's now zoom in on our sandstone. And again, I'm gonna have an X and a Y direction here. And we are gonna look at our sandstone. Now, what do sand grains look like? Yeah, they're spheres. So here, fluid flow has got to go around these spheres in the X direction. And in the Y direction, it's got to go around the spheres. But the whole, like the definition of the sphere is that it's symmetric in all directions, right? So I, there's no reason for us to expect that the fluid, that the hydraulic conductivity is different between KX and KY. 
So here we expect the hydraulic conductivity Kx in the x direction is the same as the hydraulic conductivity in the y direction. So if my hydraulic conductivity does not depend on fluid flow direction, or it's not directionally dependent, then I call this isotropic. All right, so anisotropic means I have directional dependence. Isotropic means there's no directional dependence. And again, this is at a single point. It does not, isotropy does not tell us anything about whether this thing is homogeneous or heterogeneous. Whether this K varies from the point I'm measuring it at to another point. It just tells us about the directional dependence of the hydraulic conductivity. All right, so first of all, as we went through this, this exercise here, um, we had to do some well, we demonstrated how, how the geological history and um, affects what we think the properties might be like, all right? So for example, these uniform, big, thick sequences of shale, yeah, it's probably likely that they're homogenous. They were all deposited in the same environment there wasn't any kind of, you know, changes that, that we would expect in the grain size or the or the um, or the compaction or distribution. All right, so we would expect it to be homogeneous, but we do know that it's shale and it's made of clay minerals, and those clay minerals are going to preferentially orient, and so we would expect there to be directional dependence. So just by using our geological inference, we could say, hey. I think that that formation is probably homogeneous and anisotropic. 